Hello everybody, this is Mr. Shaban. Today we're going to finish uh, the unit of separation technique by the chromatography. In the previous lessons we have spoken about different ways to separate the techniques. We have started with filtration, crystallization, evaporation, symbol distillation and fraction of distillation. And we have seen how these techniques are helping in separating the techniques. As an example, filtration is used to separate an uh, insoluble solid from a liquid. Uh, we have decanting centrifuge they are doing the same as well. While crystallization uh, and evaporation, they used to separate soluble solid uh, from water or liquid. And then we have spoken about how to separate different solids from each other as per the solubility and magnetism and then we have spoken about how to separate liquid or solvent from a solution by the help of the simple distillation and what will happen when we want to separate uh, massable liquids from each other by the help of fractional distillation and at the end we have spoken about the separation of immiscible liquids from each other by the help of separating funnel Right now we're going to talk about chromatography. Chromatography is a way to separate a mixture of solids which are dissolved in one particular solvent. So this method can be used to separate a mixture of substances. For example, you could use it to find out how many different dyes there are in a black ink. So the main, the main uh, objective of today's lesson is to separate different solids which are dissolved in one particular solvent as an example the colors so what we need to do is the following first we need to get a chromatography paper chromatography paper is a special paper that might look like a filter paper but is not it's called chromatography paper it's going to be thicker a little bit than the normal paper so we get this paper and then we draw at the lower part of the paper a pencil line we draw a pencil line uh, because this is going to be our starter point where we're going to start our experiment and we draw it with a pencil because we don't want uh, uh, the pencil line to move across the paper like the inks as I'm going to discuss it later. So we need to keep uh, the line made up of pencil because pencil is insoluble in water unlike the ink or the pen which is going to be soluble in water. So we draw a pencil line and then we're going to put the mixture of uh, dyes or we're going to put the colors which contain uh, different solids uh, dissolved in a liquid. And then we, we place them on the line and then we write with a pencil uh, the name of each mixture. Good. Then we're going to place the paper in a container as following. See that's the baseline and then we're going to place it in a beaker which contain water and you need to make sure that the water level is underneath the pencil line. The reason why we put the water level underneath the pencil line because if we place the water above the pencil line the dyes are going to dissolve in the water. We don't want the dyes to dissolve inside the water but we want the water to move up across the paper with a capillary action feature. So we don't want the water to be uh, uh, in the beaker, but we want the water to move across the paper. When the water moves across, across the paper, it's going to dissolve the dyes, as you can see, and the dye is going to move across the paper along with the water. So in chromatography uh, process, we're going to find the following if we have a pure substance like b here we have only one color we have one uh, yellow we don't have anything underneath it so that's a pure substance c that's a pure substance only one d that's a pure substance a is a pure substance but as you can see x it has different colors above each other this means that this is a mixture while these are pure substances so i want you to know that in this particular point we have different questions the first one is going to ask you which one is a mixture as we have agreed together that x is the mixture then he's going to ask you another question what is the mixture is made up of so x which is the mixture is made up of a which is a pure substance and d along with b why did i say so because we have a at the same level with one of the dyes of the x 
and uh, over here d is at the same level with one of the dies of the x and we have b at the same level with one of the dies of the x but over here c does not have any parallel point in x so c is not making up the mixture of x good that's the first question second question is going to ask you why did we draw the line with a pencil because pencil will not dissolve in the water and is going to remain as it is while the pen will dissolve in the water and move across the paper and this is going to uh, damage our experiment the third point is going to ask you why uh, did we put the pencil line above the water level because we want the water to move across the paper and we don't want the ink to dissolve inside the beaker the, these are the three uh, these are the three different points that they are going to ask you but over here i want to ask you a question why did we have uh, this uh, blue color or postage in this particular point while the red is found at the top we have found that because each type of ink will dissolve at a certain rate let's repeat that again over here we have this ink has dissolved and this ink has dissolved as well but this one has traveled much farther than the other one the reason behind that because this one has a smaller particle that moves faster than the others so over here we have uh, the blue color has a large size particle so it moves slowly red has a medium sized particle so it moves uh, like a little bit faster while the yellow color has a smallest particle size so it moves very very fast and moves the farthest across the paper so that's how the the mixtures is going to separate from each other based on the size particle and based on the speed in which the particle has traveled across the chromatography paper so uh, uh, making use of uh, paper chromatography uh, by the way the chromatography paper after it uh, the experiment is over is going to be called chromatogram so this is a chromatogram where the ink has separated into different levels uh, uh, why do we use the paper chromatography first to identify a substance second to separate mixtures of substance third to purify a substance by separating it from its impurity so uh, how to identify the substances if uh, the substance is colorless like over here if we're using amino amino acids are colorless so we tend to add something to give to give it a certain color this thing is called locating agent and this comes a lot in the past paper locating agent is a substance which is spray uh, that's sprayed on top of the amino acid to change it from colorless into uh, a certain color in order to let you see the experiment and the chromatogram so and th that's the importance of locating agent then we have something called rf value what's the rf value rf value uh, is a, a value that you can calculate by the help of the chromatogram what we need to do is to figure out uh, to get the baseline test uh, baseline sorry and then uh, that's should be done at the end of the experiment it's going to ask you calculate the rf value for uh, substance b calculate the rf value for d calculate the RS, rf value for c so what you need to do is to get the baseline that's your starter point and then to measure the distance where the red color has traveled we'll say as an example the red color has traveled 7.2 centimeter you measure it by the help of your ruler and then you note it down red color has traveled 7.2 and then you measure the distance which traveled by the water because the water is going to travel a little bit higher so we measure that distance and over here the distance traveled by the water is 12 centimeters and then in order to uh, calculate the rf value you get the distance moved by the substance divided by the distance moved by the solvent it's every time all the time you have to get an rf value below one why because most of the time or all the times you're going to find the solvent will travel farther away and farther from the other die so your value should be less than one 
so uh, that's how to calculate the RF value and as you can see these are the RF values for some substances of the amino acids as you can see all of them are found below 1 so uh, uh, this is how we can figure out the RF value as you can see uh, in today's lesson we have spoken about chromatography and we said chromatography is a method where we're going to use to separate different solids dissolved in one uh, liquid and this is based on the colors and then we have uh, taken how to do the chromatography and how to do the experiment we said we get a paper chromatography paper we draw a pencil line we place the dyes we write the name of each dye with a pencil we use a pencil because pencil will not dissolve in the water like the pen and then you place the paper in a beaker that contain water but you need to make sure that the water level is below the pencil line and then we leave it for some times where the water moves across the paper to dissolve uh, the dyes and you're going to have different uh, levels for each dye if you have uh, two three four colors above each other this means you have a mixture of uh, dyes while one represent a pure substance and then we have taken how to calculate the rf value we said rf value you can calculate it by the help of dividing the distance moved by the substance by the distance moved by the solvent you can measure the distances by the help of your ruler at the chromatogram so i hope you have enjoyed today's lesson and see you next time